Good morning, boys and girls. Today we are going to be covering a new section in math. We're going to be covering substitution in equations, specifically the K method when it comes to quadratic equations. I know Michael touched on this in the previous grade 10 video, so go check out the link below and see it. But today we're going to do the K method, some substitution work. We're going to work through some really simple two examples that outlines the methodology that you're going to need to use to solve these kind of equations that you get asked in class. So let's get started. Starting off with the first example, this expression above here, what do we see that are common terms in this expression? If we look at this, we can see that this bracket, x squared minus 5x, appears twice over here. And if we had to solve this expression straight off the bat and multiply out and simplify it, you'd have one power raised to another power, which would give you some kind of x to the 4 expression, which would be really difficult to solve. So to make life easier, you can start substituting in different variables to hold this expression. So let's start off with that and go, therefore, let k be equal to x squared minus 5x. This will change the nature of our term, but it will preserve the relationship amongst all of the variables. So now our expression or equation changes to 9k plus 20 equals minus k squared. And what does that look familiar to you? It looks similar to your standard ax squared plus bx plus c quadratic expression, which is a lot easier to simplify than if we had some form of x to the power 4 expression. So putting it into the standard form, we're going to go k squared plus 9k plus 20 equals 0. And if we had to factorize this, it comes out to be two brackets, k, k, and how can we factorize this a lot better? You've got five and four that you can use to multiply to get your c term, right? So you've got four, you've got five, and you can see that this is a positive sign, so you know that your terms are gonna be adding with each other. So you're gonna have a plus and a plus, don't forget, equals zero. Now you solve this simplified expression because of your substitution with k, but that doesn't solve your whole problem for you because those could be your critical values, but because of your substitution you did earlier, you need to simplify this even further. So you can say, therefore, critical values are k equal to minus four or k equal to minus five. Now you can substitute this back into this expression. So if we had to take it for one and two, now having these two results for these critical values because of the substitution, you could take expression one or that I've noted there and say, therefore let K be equal to minus four. Substituting it into this, you're gonna have X squared minus five X equals minus 4. Right? I had to bring this across, you'd have x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. You've now got the expression of x squared minus 5x equals minus 4. Moving this across, you'd have x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. And how could I factorize this out? Standard form, you've had x, x, and what's a common factor that you can take out of here? You'd have four and one. You can see the minus sign there. So you know that this is going to be a minus, that's going to be a minus. So you already can determine that your actual critical values after solving this first part of the expression is x equal to 4 
or x equal to 1. That's the first result that you get for solving after k equals minus 4 and substituting it. The second result that you'd want to get would now be using k is equal to minus 5. So you'd have x squared minus 5x equals minus 5. Right? Taking this across, you would have x squared minus 5x plus 5 equals 0. And creating your brackets equal to 0, you'd have x, x, and how would you solve this so that you have minus 5x there? You could use 5 and 1. And because you can see that term there is negative, and this one's positive, you know you're going to have two minus signs. And what would your critical values be? It would be x equal to 5 or x equal to 1. And that would be the result for this expression. Does it make sense? Well, it should because if you have to simplify this entire expression out, you'd have something of the form of a function that would say be f of x is equal to some x to the power of 4 expression, boom, 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 boom. Now that you've seen a really simple example for the k-method substitution, we're going to try a slightly trickier one. The same rules apply, so look for the common elements in the term so that you can do a k-substitution. This is the one that we're going to start off with, and if you have to look at it, what do you actually think looks very similar? Well, 4x and 17 do not look similar to each other. 60 and 17 do not. So, process of elimination. What do we have here? This series of terms look very common to each other. So, we're going to group them and use the substitution to let k equal to x squared minus 4x. Very similar to the previous example, but obviously having a denominator and a numerator makes things a little bit trickier, but the same concept applies. So now if I had to make that substitution, you'd have k equals 17 minus 60 over k. Now because you've got k in the numerator here, in the denominator, you wouldn't want k to be equal to zero. So you can already say, therefore, k cannot be equal to zero because you'll have a division by zero which you do not want. And also, the fact is, you do not want this expression to be equal to zero, so you already know by that, same kind of breath, you'd have x squared minus 4x cannot be equal to zero. Right? And if you have to take out a common factor here of x, you'd have x minus 4 cannot be equal to zero, which also means the actual value of x, x cannot be equal to zero, and x cannot be equal to four. So you already know in your whole working out, once we simplify this further down, if you get a result that x is equal to zero or x is equal to four, you did something wrong while you were trying to do this. Now, let's simplify this a lot further. Now, multiplying through by k, which you're allowed to do because you've already eliminated the fact that x cannot be equal to 0, x cannot be equal to 4. So if you had to multiply through by k everywhere through this expression, you have k squared equals 17k minus 60. And you want to bring this expression back into standard form of ax squared minus bx plus c equals 0, you'd have k squared minus 17k plus 60 equals 0. So you've got it into the standard form, which is what you want. Now you can begin factorizing. You've got it in the standard form. You've solved for these or eliminated these possibilities of those critical values. And now you'd want to start factorizing. So start with your two brackets equals 0. Now you know that you're going to have k because obviously it's a second order. 
you'd have k. You do know that you would want to take out an expression that gives you something with a minus sign. You also know that you would want factors that multiply together would give you 60. And if you had to do some thinking, you'd have what product of two numbers would give you 60 and also the additional multiplication, additional minus of each would give you 17. That would be 12 and 5. But you know you would want minus 17 and you would want plus 60, so each one would be minus. So your critical values end up being k equal to 12 or k equal to 5. Now we're going to take this. Now we're going to take this result and substitute it back into our original substitution to find out the actual values of x that are our official critical value. Starting off with critical value number one and number two, let's find out what the true value for x is that solves that expression. We're going to have x squared minus four x equals twelve. Bring it across to put it into standard form. You have 4x equals 12. Now, ooh, let's change that. Minus 12, 0. What result would give you this? You know that you would want it to be x equals 0. Don't forget that. x. And what multiply together would give you 12? Well, you've got 2 and 6. 1 and 12, 3 and 4, but that result of 3 and 4 multiplied together would not give you 4. Well, added together would not give you 4. So the best option would be 6 and 2. And you know you would want a minus, which would be minus, and you'd want this to be a plus. So you know for the first part of your equation that you've done the substitution for, the critical values are x equal to 6 and x equal to minus 2. Now for the second part we're going to substitute k is equal to 5 into this expression which would mean that x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. And how could we factorize this out? You'd have x, x, and what multiplied together would give you 5. You've got 5 and 1. And you know this is a minus, so you'd want to take this to be minus and that to be plus. So you know your critical values here for the second part of your substitution would be x equal to 5 and x equal to minus 1. A quick check to make sure that your answers that you got are not complete garbage would be are any of these critical values the values that I eliminated over here no they're not they're not x equal to 0 and they are not x equal to 4 so on the first check your values seem correct but what I challenge you to do go substitute in what's the easiest one to substitute in here substitute in minus 1 in this expression and see does it solve does the left side equal to the right side and if it does well that answer is at least correct you've got three more to go and solve and also another quick check you've got four critical values here which means you've got four roots that lie on your graph which would be five six minus 1 and you've got minus 2 on your x-axis say for example your y-axis or a function of x so you know that your graph in some way is going to cross those four roots which would mean that you've got some kind of fourth order polynomial which would make sense if you had to multiply this through by x squared minus 4 you'd get an x to the power 4 term somewhere. So your working out might be correct.
and that is k-method substitution. So although you might be watching and trying to understand why does the k-method work and why would you ever want to use it because you've got these simple expressions and if you're really really smart you could probably just solve it straight in your head. I mean I do it all the time. <laughs> Anyways what happens in like multivariable calculus when you do reach university level and you start doing kind of advanced mathematics you might get massive expressions of functions that might be x of y, w, z and you get these massive order polynomials that might be like x to the power 7 plus 3wy on your numerator and you might also get bigger terms that sit on your uh, denominator and they expand and then you've got massive terms that even extend further. The problem with trying to do this and trying to calculate everything in your head and you moving a lot of multiplication, a lot of divisions around, doing a massive substitution of, say for example, letting that equal to, um, let's say, theta, simplifies the expression so much more because you can have something that, instead of having this long denominator numerator, you can have something that's a little bit more bite size. You've got, say, theta squared plus, uh, not omega, yeah, omega over r to the power 4 plus 7. So doing the k-method kind of substitution might solve it really quickly for quadratic equations, but if you're doing a lot of multivariable calculus and you have massive expanses of terms, doing a substitution simplifies your working out and you can then break it off and now say, okay, I know that theta is equal to x to the power 7 plus 3 omega y. That's a lot easier to work with than trying to do this massive expansive series. Don't worry, simple methods like this are really powerful even if you do get to matric, varsity level and advanced mathematics. So, K-method works, use it when you need it.